Hi, I'm Steve Selig, the founder of FitTest. Uh, this video is on post-exercise hypotension for people with high blood pressure or hypertension. In other words, using exercise to lower um, a, a person's blood pressure who has high blood pressure, uh, just using exercise and uh, a very quick response uh, to that as well. So first of all, our blood pressure um, uh, in a physiological sense is made up of three main components, heart rate, stroke volume, which is the amount of blood coming out of the heart on each beat of the heart, and it'll be in mils per minute, multiplied by uh, total proof of resistance, which is the resistance offered by all of the blood vessels around the body uh, to that blood flow. The higher the resistance, uh, to uh, blood flow through all of the blood vessels, then the higher the blood pressure. And obviously the higher the heart rate and the higher the output of the heart, then they also increase blood pressure. So three sort of separate components uh, to blood pressure. Now in recovery from exercise, uh, what happens is cardiac output, which is made up of those first two elements, heart rate and stroke volume, when we stop exercise, the cardiac output falls from that peak exercise level more rapidly than the restoration of peripheral resistance. When we exercise, peripheral resistance uh, falls. In other words, we open up our blood vessels to get blood flow into the active tissues, particularly the muscles, and this drops peripheral resistance. So in recovery, peripheral resistance goes back up to its resting level. However, in recovery from exercise under certain conditions, and fortunately benefiting people with high blood pressure more than anybody else normally, uh, that's due to this combination of um, cardiac output falling faster than peripheral resistance being restored. So there's a persistent, if you like, falling peripheral resistance or persistent vasodilatation, which can cause a persistent, in other words, fairly long lasting blood drop in blood pressure and this is particularly beneficial for people with high blood pressure and is one of the real benefits of exercise for these individuals. And you can get it right now um, with a single exercise session. So that's a, a real learning moment uh, for the client with high blood pressure and should be a really good motivator. So how this works, just to take you through that formula a little bit more, at rest, um, and I'm talking about on this first um, section, someone who responds to post-exercise hyper, hyper, hypotension, and I'll show you the non-responders next. So the responders, we've got the formula here, and in exercise, heart rate goes up a lot, stroke volume goes up uh, reasonably, and um, peripheral resistance, in other words, vasodilatation persists to open up the blood uh, vessels uh, to the extra flow that's needed um, to those muscles in exercise. And the end result is we have three arrows up, one arrow down, so we end up two arrows up, and blood pressure goes up in normal, healthy people, and even and obviously people with hypertension, it goes up in all individuals apart from people with significant heart failure or other major heart conditions. So blood pressure goes up in exercise. Now, what happens to the PEH responder, the person who responds post-exercise hypotension in recovery? So blood, what happens is heart rate drops back to normal quickly, stroke volume drops back to normal quickly, but peripheral resistance stays low for many hours. And I'll show you a little bit more on that in a slide or two. And the end result is we end up with lower blood pressure occurring during recovery. Now, I just want to show you what happens with non-responders. And really what I'm thinking about here are those people with significant high blood pressure who are treatment resistant to hypertension. So they might be on polypharmacy, multiple drugs for blood pressure, and they're not under adequate control for their hypertension. Now, um, what happens um, at rest in these people is they have elevated proof of resistance normally, that's the most normal model, um, and that results in a greater increases in blood pressure during exercise. Because they might be on a beta blocker or some other heart rate modulating drug, notice their blood heart rate doesn't go up as much compared to the normal responder in exercise. So the heart rate may stay relatively depressed 
But overall, these treatment resistant people with hypertension have an increased um, level of blood pressure in uh, exercise, which is uh, not um, favorable to health. Now, I just want to highlight what happens in recovery to these people, and I'm talking in generalizations here, not specific to single clients. So again, their heart rate, as for the normal people, their heart rates go down quickly, in fact, maybe even more quickly because they might be on a beta blocker, for example. Uh, stroke volume goes down very quickly, but TPR remains elevated, and this re means that their blood pressure remains elevated in recovery. So, um, but I just want to go over some of the literature now that is relevant to this. So vasodilatation occurs even in, and I'm talking about the responders here, occurs even in non-active muscle groups. For example, if you're doing lower body exercise, and I'll come to the modes of exercise in a minute, then that will benefit the upper body as well. And so you get a generalized vasodilatation, and that's due to both neural or neurohormonal and a probably local vasodilatory effect as well. So PEH, the, the really good thing, the good news is PEH works for a wide array of modes, intensities and volumes of, in other words, duration of exercise. And PEH persists for individuals with high blood pressure. For up to 22 hours, the literature is um, providing evidence of this after 30 to 40 minutes of submaximal aerobic exercise. However, in normotensive, in other words, people who don't need to lower their blood pressure, the blood pressure, pressure lowering effect of, of recovery after exercise only persists for two hours. So we're actually in a win-win. Where we want blood pressure to stay low, that is in people with hypertension, we get a really long lasting benefit after 30, 40, 30 to 40 minutes of submax exercise but only a short um, uh, effect for those with, who don't need to lower their blood pressure. Now, the next one is something that I um, do a lot in my practice, and that is we can get PEH, post-exercise hypotension, working for several hours after moderate to high intensity, but short duration, just three to five minutes of aerobic exercise. And I've developed a technique in my own practice, which I'm going to share with you in a minute. You can get several hours benefit after high intensity sprint type exercise and high intensity resistance exercise. So this is again showing that the, the modes, intensities and volumes of exercise are not critical. And you can, you can move around with an experiment with different modes, intensities and volumes according to your client's needs and according to the capacity of your client to undergo these forms of exercise. Now, passive recovery works faster than active recovery. So active recovery, um, and the reason is active recovery promotes venous return uh, via muscle and inspiratory pumps, which then promotes stroke volume. So that it helps to maintain stroke volume in that active recovery phase. And this promotes stroke volume via the Frank Starling law of the heart, which stimulates blood pressure during uh, that phase of recovery. So I would use this, for example, in someone who, whose blood pressure dropped too quickly in recovery uh, and I was concerned about them actually becoming symptomatically hypotensive. In other words, you know, lightheadedness, even feeling like fainting. So I would use, I would prefer active recovery in that setting. But for someone with very significant hypertension, passive recovery generally works really well. So what would advice would I give to certain clients for their regular exercise sessions? Now, the first thing is I'm really focusing here on people with hyper, hypo, sorry, hypertension mostly, but also one or two with hypotension at rest. So I want some of my clients to self-measure their blood pressure before commencing exercise, and particularly people with high blood pressure, and of those, particularly those with treatment-resistant hypertension. If systolic blood pressure is over 180, and I won't talk about diastolic pressure here, then wait until uh, blood pressure is lower if that can happen. And you probably need to consult or you do need to consult a medical practitioner. If it's between 140 and 180, then you can try my short uh, post-exercise hypo hypotension manoeuvre, which I'm going to show you in this presentation. 
and probably consult a medical practitioner because this may indicate that your high blood pressure or the client's high blood pressure is getting out of control, out of good control. If the systolic is between 100 and 140 millimetres of mercury, then exercise is generally safe and PEH is not really indicated. There's a bit of a discussion going on at the moment whether 140 or 130 is really the critical number, and that will depend on which um, medical authority you consult, but it's certainly in that range. If systolic blood pressure is less than 100 at rest, then this could indicate that someone has hypotension at rest, and so we certainly don't want to use a pH manoeuvre that would um, actually make their recovery blood pressures even lower than that and, and probably produce symptoms. So I would say for this setting, PEH is contraindicated and instead I would use an active ramped recovery instead to try and maintain blood pressure during um, early recovery. I'll have, you know, I can talk about that in uh, uh, another presentation. It's not really a topic here. Self-measure blood pressure immediately after exercise sessions for those people who I've just talked about. So this is what I do uh, to provoke uh, a pH um, effect in someone who arrives with high blood pressure. So I've written here 140, but I've recently up 150, but I've recently lowered that to 140. So um, what um, I do here is apply very quickly within half a minute to a minute at, at the most, get them up to a moderate intensity or high intensity aerobic exercise, for example, on a cycle ergometer or a cross trainer or a treadmill if it's safe in terms of balance and gait and not falling. So anything that you can do moderate to high intensity on in of an aerobic nature, so I'm talking about aerobic exercise, and then try and maintain it for up to five minutes and a sudden passive recovery. So in other words, sitting on a chair suddenly from that high level of exercise to try to provoke the hypotensive response that I've talked about earlier. And, that, and the hypotensive response can take up to 15, I've even seen 20 minutes before it kicks in. So you really need to have good um, chair rest for this time. This might look like a total waste of time but in fact, it's a real motivating, um, uh, has a real motivating effect for the client and can ha even have a learning effect for the exercise professional. So you really need to wait for that um, heart rate and stroke volume to come down and then for that peripheral resistance to really persist so that you get this lowering of blood pressure that I talked about earlier. And then after that, and I, I admit that this takes 20 minutes, so you, it almost seems like you're wasting 20 minutes of your exercise session but I think it has tremendous benefits and I, I use it in my own practice. And then you can get underway with a main exercise session. So just to give you a case example, this client arrived with very high blood pressure of 184 over 112, and I decided to use this five minutes. So this was right on the, the, the limit of the 180. In fact, it was a fraction over. And um, after this protocol of quickly getting to moderate intensity exercise, Checking his blood pressure, and I didn't talk about this earlier, but we need to check blood pressure very early on when we get to this level of exercise to make sure that we're not in the red zone with blood pressure, in which case you'd need to stop. But in my experience, this doesn't often happen and you can usually get through this five minute period. So at the end of the five minute period, over the next 15 minutes, his blood pressure dropped from 184 systolic to 135 systolic and gave us this great window. So this arrow here refers to 15 to 20 minutes of passive recovery. Um, and after that 15 to 20 minutes of passive recovery, we were then able to do a normal GXT, in other words, a normal sign and symptom limited incremental exercise test up to a peak blood pressure of 220 systolic, which was still in the safe zone, according to the American College of Sports Medicine guidelines. So, that really gave us that opportunity. Now, without this manoeuvre, I don't think we could have done this exercise test here. And you'll notice in recovery, I did a stepped down approach. And so when he left the facility, his blood pressure was all the way down to 111 systolic. Now, I do admit that this person's got severe labile hypertension and hypotension. So there's episodes of both. So I'm not saying this is a completely straightforward case, but I'm just giving you an example and so if you put a line, put a strike through hypotension, 
and you just deal with people with hypertension, maybe just adequately or even ad inadequately controlled hypertension, this is a really good technique to try and I recommend it for you. So I just want to give you a little bit of my practice data. And this is not um, science, this is not research data, this is simply my practice data. And what we've got here are about 12 individuals who arrived with very high blood pressure. So the minimum here was about 150 and the maximum was up to about 184, five, somewhere around there. So it was in that band of 140, 150 up to 180. And you'll see we've got a, a large cluster of these who I applied the pH manoeuvre to. And so this is the blood pressure post manoeuvre on the why on the vertical axis on the horizontal axis is their arrival blood pressures and you can see that after the ph maneuver they have all all of these individuals have dropped their systolic blood pressure very significantly in fact the average was about 35. the red dot responds to a non-responder and so i might actually present this as a case study further in this series uh, because he has agreed that i can present it as a case study now this is a man um, uh, just a 56 years of age who is on polypharmacy. So he's actually on five antihypertensive medications and he's not getting his blood pressure under adequate control. And he was a non-responder to this manoeuvre. And we actually tried it twice using different techniques and he simply just didn't respond. Now, I just want to show you a little bit wider practice data. And this is um, arrival blood pressure on the um, horizontal axis and on the vertical axis is the systolic blood pressure at the end of an hour long session. And we can basically group these as normotensive cluster of clients here and clients with various um, levels of hypertension here. And you'll notice that the clients with hypertension, I'll come back to the non-responders in a minute, but most of the rest of them, well, all of the rest of them responded really well to having a PEH, you know, post-exercise hypotension at the end of that one hour session. Now, um, and the, the normotensive, those with normal blood pressure, didn't, don't need to lower their blood pressure with exercise and on the whole only lowered their blood pressure by a few millimetres of mercury, which is a good thing, so it was a win-win. We did have two non-responders, and this is the non-responder that I talked about earlier, and there's another non-responder there that I'm just highlighting there. So it doesn't always work. Now, of course, the, the, this, this data can be open to the criticism of white coat hypertension, but I can assure you in this caseload that these are people with genuine hypertension who are regular clients to my clinic, my clinical service, and they are very unlikely to have on their sixth, seventh, eighth visit to have um, any issue with uh, white coat hypertension. So I, I really feel, although this is uncontrolled practice data, I really feel that this is um, a, a real benefit of exercise and it really matches up with the literature as well. So here is some of the literature that I consulted to put this video together, which you're welcome to follow up with if you want more detail on this topic. And as always, um, I close this by just saying if you have any questions around this, you can come back to me at info at myfitness.com.au. So have a great day and I hope you enjoy this video. Bye for now.